Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer for the last day of February. As always, we begin with our service of light, so I will light our candle. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. And we're going to be singing our hymn throughout the service. It's hymn number 631. The kingdom of God is justice and joy, and we'll sing the first verse now. The kingdom of God is justice and joy. For Jesus restores what sin would destroy. God's power and glory in Jesus we know. And here and hereafter the kingdom shall grow. And our psalm is Psalm 47, which we say together. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now we'll sing the second verse of our hymn. The kingdom of God is mercy and grace. The captives are free, the sinners find place. The outcasts are welcomed, God's banquet to share. And hope is awakened in place of despair. Our gospel is John 2, 13-22. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle, he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised, his disciples remembered that he said, had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We don't often hear the word zeal too much these days, but it seems that it was a word that was applied to Jesus, not in the terms of being a zealot, like one who wanted to overthrow the Roman authorities, like the zealots of his time, but it was zeal for God's kingdom and God's house. And nothing got uh, stuck in Jesus' craw like hypocrisy and changing something holy into something very unholy. And that's what had happened. Uh, he. He uh, told that, that they had set, they'd made the temple a marketplace. Uh, it became a thing about money, um, about profit, and, and it also became a thing about oppressing 
people because many people couldn't afford the sacrifices and yet they had to make sacrifices according to the rules of the temple authorities and so it, it kept people oppressed and that was one thing that drove Jesus nuts. Um, he hated anything that excluded anyone from God's grace and uh, in those days people understood God's grace to come through the temple, the synagogue and um, Jesus wasn't going to have it. Um, we don't seem to get consumed by zeal these days and yet there are many many reasons for us to be zealous um, probably not so much about exclusion from our uh, our church uh, we practice an open table we want to welcome everyone but there are reasons to have a righteous anger these days uh, we picture Jesus often as meek and mild but he was often angry he showed his anger he had a righteous anger an anger that was about uh, caring for others who were being oppressed and there are reasons for that today I mean we look around us today we think about the nations at war we think about refugees uh, the world has never had as many refugees as, as it has right now um, and there's a reason for righteous anger but what we do with that anger is what's most important um, what we need to do is we need to harness that anger that zeal if you like um, to putting pressure on, on governments, on, on uh, politicians, or, or uh, other countries. Um, we need to put pressure on our, our politicians, to put pressure on other countries, uh, to have the uh, ability to, to put even financial pressure on other nations, for example, um, so that uh, peace can uh, once again uh, come to our world. Uh, it's up to us to be engaged in these things, uh, to not just accept them, uh, but to be engaged, to listen, uh, to make decisions, um, to uh, speak to our elected officials even, and others who can make a difference. So um, don't just think that we just have to be meek and mild. Um, I don't think we need to be angry people, but we do need to be engaged in the issues of the world and to be responsive. Let us sing the next verse of our hymn. The kingdom of God is challenge and joy. Believe the good news, repent and rejoice. His love for us sinners brought Christ to his cross. A crisis of judgment for gain and for love. And now let us confess the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And in our prayers today, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that we may depart this life in your faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of St. Luke and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for peace in the world. We pray for people in Ukraine, for people in Syria, Iran. We pray for many people who are suffering because of war and discord 
in Africa, in Asia, in the Americas. We pray, O Lord, that we might be engaged in peacemaking. We pray, O Lord, for refugees as they are trying to find a way to live a dignified life. Keep them full of hope. Give them your grace. And may we be welcomers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, uh, those known to us, those unknown to us, uh, for those in our community, and especially today we pray for Jane Ross, Jeff Smith, Kareem Newell, Marion Conlon, Alec Dickerson, Edith Walsh, David Reed, Olive Mould, Yvonne Lytle, Fred Jones, and Katie McKenna. We pray, O oh Lord, for all the sick, that they might know the healing touch of Jesus and have wholeness of being in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who have died, and today we pray, especially in memory of Vic Verda and Don Russell. We pray, O oh Lord, for their family and friends and all who mourn their loss. Help them to know your promise to be faithful to us in death and life beyond death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for 10 more households in our parish list, and if you're joining us from another parish, I invite you to pray for members of your community as well. Today we pray for Kirk, Melanie, Reese, and Michelle Sabo, for Mary Salomon and Brian Bartels, for Gino, Deborah, Nadia, and Olivia Salvo, for Mihira Samrasenye, and for Shannara Sirisena and their children Siobhan and Saraya, for Brenda Schofield, for Alba Scott, for Byrne and Elaine Scribner, for Paul, Anna, Carly, and Emily Simak, for Doris Serge, and for Matthew, Ali, and Henry Seymour. We pray, O oh Lord, uh, for their health and well-being. We pray, O oh Lord, in all that they do, that they might have your grace flowing through them and making a difference for peace in their own lives and in our community. We pray, O oh Lord, uh, for their health and happiness. And we pray that they might know that they belong to a community of faith that cares and prays for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a province and two dioceses of the Anglican Communion. Today we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church. We also pray for the Diocese of Capel in the Anglican Church of Canada and the Diocese of Quebec in the Anglican Church of Canada. We pray for their bishops, their clergy and people, for God's mission that is theirs in their part of the world, and for the tools and the grace to carry out that mission. We pray that they might rejoice in knowing that the world is praying for them at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for another brother of the Society, St. John the Evangelist. Today we pray for Brother Jack Crawley. We give you thanks, O Lord, for his deep commitment to, to the faith and uh, to his community. We pray for him in his words of wisdom, in his preaching and teaching, and all of his ministry. We pray for his health and well-being and happiness. And we pray for his strengthening. We pray that your grace might continue to flow richly through him. And we pray, O oh Lord, that he might know he is supported in prayer, not only by his brothers, but by us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray our night prayer from the Anglican Church of New Zealand. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day 
new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. And we pray our collect for this first week of Lent. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing the last verse of our hymn. The kingdom is come, the gift and the goal, in Jesus begun, in heaven made whole. The heirs of the kingdom shall answer his call, and all things cry glory to God all in all. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us in evening prayer. I hope you'll be able to join us on Thursday as well. And of course, uh, either in person or online on the weekend. I wish you a good night's sleep and all of God's blessings. <laughs>